Hey there, physical science students. This is Ms. Ruark, and we are getting into rearranging equations. Um, I can't get my pen, so we'll go with a different color this time. All right, so we're going to worry about rearranging equations with this vodcast. And with rearranging equations, you've seen this before. You learned it in math class, and it does apply to science, because in science, we do a lot of math. I know. All right, so what if we had this equation right here? f is equal to m over a. And I asked you to rearrange this equation to solve for just the m. Okay, so how would we rearrange this equation to solve for this m right here? Well, we've got to get rid of the a. And to get rid of the a, we need it to cancel. So to cancel this, we're going to do the opposite of the mathematical operation it's doing right now. Well, if it's dividing right now, in order to cancel it, we're going to have to multiply both sides by the letter a. So we're going to multiply both sides by a and when we do that we're equal we end up with m by itself and then f times a. Alright well what if I wanted to get this equation here and I wanted the a by itself? Well we've got to get rid of the f and in this case f is being multiplied by the a. So to get rid of that we do the opposite and we're going to divide by the f. And if we divide by the f, it cancels here and it cancels here, and we're left with a is equal to m over f. All right, so that's one way that you can solve for this. Now, another way that you could solve for this is by using geometry. I know you're all intrigued right now because you loved geometry so much, yes? We love math and shapes, and no, we're not getting into all the craziness with geometry. You just need to know the triangle. Okay, with the triangle, because there are three parts to this equation here, let me erase that so there's not stuff written all over the place. There's three parts to this equation, and there are three parts to this triangle. So we can plug those three parts into the triangle so that we can use it to solve for whichever one we're looking for. All right, well, we can put M on top and A on bottom because that would show division. Right? And then the other spot would be left for the f. So f is equal to m over a. This says f is equal to m over a. Remember, this has to be division. So how do we use this? Well, if I'm solving for force, or, or for f, I'm going to cover the f up. And that tells me that I've got m divided by a is left over. That was pretty easy. All right, well, what if I was solving for m? So if I'm solving for m, we're going to cover that up. And I'm left with F times A because they're right next to each other. All right, well, what if we're going to solve for A? All right, well, let's cover the A up. And what are we left with? M over F. Ah, look there. Using geometry to help you solve the problems of the world. I know. All right, let's try another one. What if we were to solve for D and we had M over V? Alright, so we can get rid of the, if we're solving for M, we can multiply both sides by V. And remember, if I'm going too fast, pause it. Okay, we can multiply both sides by V, and we end up with M is equal to DV. Alright, so if we multiply both sides by V, this cancels, and then we end up with V times D, which is that. Alright, what if I wanted to solve for V? If I want to get rid of the D here, I would need to divide both sides by the D. And when I divide both sides by the D, that cancels there, and we're left with V is equal to M over D. All right, that's really good and all, but can we just use that triangle thing you just showed us? You sure can. All right, so here's our triangle. We've got to make sure that the, let me erase all that, make it pretty. We've got to make sure that this stays as a fraction. So what's going to go on top? If you said M, you got it right. Okay, M over V, and then we put the D in here. And so now, and I bet I have those written in there already. Let me erase all that junk. I sure do. All right, so if we want to solve for the D, we cover the D up, and we're left with M over V. All right, mass over, or M over V. If we wanted to solve for the M, we cover the M up and we're left with D times V. All right, well, what if we wanted to solve for the V? We cover that up and we're left with M over D.
That's pretty easy, right? Okay, so that's just some that's just a simple way that we can use it. There's other ones that we can use and, and we'll come across them as we as we get there. Okay. All right, so let's uh, let's see if we can solve this for a. Now, unfortunately, there's not some neat little um, there's not a neat little like shape that we can use for this because of the plus sign here. But we've got to solve for a. So in order to get a by itself, we can't automatically get rid of a whatever's with a. We've got to do that first. Okay, so in order to get rid of this vo, since it's being added to the a, we need to subtract it. So we're going to subtract the VO from both sides. And if we subtract the VO from both sides, we end up with VF minus VO is equal to AT. And okay, now we can get this by itself. The A by itself, we can do that by dividing both sides by T. And so we end up with VF minus VO over T, and that's equal to A. Man, Miss Ruark, you are a magical wizard. I know I am. It's okay. You will be too. Okay, so let's try, let's say if we had VO is equal to 10 meters per second and VF is equal to 30 meters per second and then T is your time would be 5 seconds. So let's just plug this in and see if we can solve for um, our acceleration or A. Okay, so if we plug all that in, we would have... 30 m over s minus 10 m over s and all that is divided by 5. So if you plug this into your calculator, 30 minus 10, which should give you 20, and you divide that by 5, well 20 divided by 5 would be 4. So you should get 4 meters per second squared. All right, let's look at another one. What if we had Ke is equal to 1 half mv squared? And we need to solve for v. Oh, that's a lot of work, right? Okay, well, let's start with the easiest thing, which is this 1 half. If we want to get rid of that 1 half, we need to multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 2 over 1. And that's the same thing as 2. So that cancels here. Oops. And, well, we've got to multiply by 2 on this side. So we end up with 2 Ke is equal to mv squared. Now we've got to get v by itself, and we still have this m here. So we've got to divide both sides by m. Okay, and if you divide both sides by m, ugh, sorry, you end up with 2ke over m is equal to v squared. Now, you're not done, because we need v by itself, not squared. So how do you get v by itself if it's squared? Well, you take the square root of it. So we have to take the square root of both sides in order to get v by itself. So if we take the square root of this, it cancels and we're left with just v. And then if you take the square root of this side, well, nothing cancels. So your answer in terms, in terms of v would be the square root of 2ke over m. Uh, some of you are like, man, Mr. Eric, you're speaking gibberish. That's okay. We will make sense of this in class. All right, so let's do a practice problem. Why not? Because we love math. Even if you say you don't, you still love math. So 2Ke over M is equal to V. We've got M equal to 6 kilograms. Ke is equal to 363 kilograms times meters squared over seconds squared. And we're solving for V. So we're going to plug all this into that equation there. So 2 times 363 over 6, and don't forget, you've got to take the square root of that. Okay, so you do 2 times 363 and then divide by 6, and then take the square root, and you should end up getting 11 meters squared per second squared. All right, now, that seemed like a lot, but guess what? We're done. Okay, and this right here explains to you why chocolate chip cookie dough is so much better raw. All right, I'll see you class.